You will not be surprised that many patients have anxieties about undergoing endoscopy. The thought that a flexible instrument is going to enter their mouth and into their esophagus, stomach and intestines, or up the other end into the colon as well as the small intestine from behind, fills patients with dreadful pictures. In gastroscopy, patients worry about gagging on a scope that may pass the pharynx, which is quite sensitive, on its way into the esophagus and the stomach. At the other end, the patients will worry about pain if the colonoscope enters the large intestine and has to navigate its way through the loops of bowel. These are all very reasonable worries. But nowadays, endoscopy is done very comfortably using sedative techniques. Now, sedation is within the spectrum of anesthesia, but it is at the lightest end of the spectrum. When we sedate patients for endoscopy, we used medicines that will bring about a state of relaxation and perhaps put the patient into a dreamlike state. Under sedation, patients do not experience the endoscopy at all. When they wake up, they have no memory of it and no experience of it. And in fact, many patients ask us when they wake up, Doctor, when are you going to start? And in fact, we have already finished. When patients have to undergo colonoscopy, some bowel preparation is necessary. And this is so that we can clean out the colon, which otherwise contains a lot of feces. Patients have to drink some laxative liquids in order to purge out all their feces so that they are very clean. Patients sometimes worry that this may feel like having food poisoning and diarrhea. But in fact, it is a relatively easy procedure where the patient merely experiences the need to go to the toilet as if it were normal and then pass a motion and as the motions become more and more liquid, the patient can see that the colon is being cleaned out. At the end, the patient may pass what may look like water or thinly stained water. And then we know that the patient is clean enough in the colon for us to do a colonoscopy and see everything. We also inform patients of the risks of endoscopy. I mentioned sedation earlier. This is a very safe end of the spectrum of anesthesia and the majority, the vast majority of patients do not have any ill experience with it. Only in the rarest instances due to hyperreactivity of a patient to the medicines or an allergy which wasn't previously known, might there be some complications with sedation. So we generally don't worry about this. We also tell patients that it is possible for the endoscope that is passing through the digestive system to cause a perforation of the wall of the digestive system. This is a rare occurrence and may happen when you have a diseased part of the digestive system and possibly an inexperienced endoscopist performing the procedure. But in most instances, the endoscopist ought to be very experienced and will know how to navigate his way through the digestive system without running the risk of perforation. So this complication is also very rare. We also tell patients that if we have to conduct therapeutic procedures, for example, removing polyps, a procedure called polypectomy, there may be instances when such a procedure leaves the patient at risk of bleeding from the procedure site. While we take every precaution to ensure that the procedure site is safe, the risk of bleeding is still there, although it is very small, and we generally don't have significant worries about it. Endoscopic risk is higher when we're doing therapeutic procedures. If we're removing polyps, I have already mentioned the risk of bleeding. Sometimes we use lasers to recannulate the esophagus or the intestines in order to bypass a tumor or cancer that is blocking the way. And such burning procedures using either a laser or an argon plasma beam can theoretically perforate the, the digestive system as well. But obviously, the more experience the endoscopist has, even with serious procedures like this, um, the risk is very small for complications.